Welcome back to Cure of the Common Game. Today, in deck number whatever the next deck number is, uh, <laughs> we're going to be talking about Zeri and the Golden Wind. Now, this is the first one from Dominary United. This is one of the Commander cards, one of the million. But it is Tribal Griffins yet again. I do not have Zuberi Golden Feather in the deck, um, but it's a similar deck. I think I did a little better this time. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to go through the Griffins. Uh, the Griffins, what they are, does not really matter. Um, they are largely flying. I think there's a couple that don't have flying. But you have an entire army of flyers. Now, granted, the problem with Griffins is most of them start at four mana. So I tried to play as many of the uh, lower casting cost ones as I could find. But, I mean, flying first strike, two, two for four mana, that's... Uh, um, but there's one that doesn't inherently fly. But your tribe, just to be honest with you, our tribe is a bunch of flyers. They're griffins, right? So where the juice of the deck comes in is everything that's not. Now, as I said, they do cost a little more, so the Urza's Incubator kind of... Uh, I almost didn't put it in the deck because it is three, a three drop, and you would normally be able to play start playing Griffins on turn four anyway. Uh, however, if you get lucky with your soul ring you can you know do that on turn two and start dropping griffins maybe double dropping griffins don't know uh but wayfarer's baubles good ramp for white uh thought vessel there are i'm putting a lot more value in a thought vessel than i used to uh mainly because i play so many big games that there are a lot of you know draw a bunch of card effects, and Thought Vessel lets me keep those cards. Of course, Mind Stone and a Marble Diamond. Mind Stone can double as, you know, a one-shot one card draw if you need it to. Uh, Secret Rendezvous. You can pick somebody at, at the table to be besties with. And then, of course, the Staff of Nim, acting like that personal Howie mine. Um... I have, uh, here's our one non-basic land, it's Ghost Quarter. Um, I have a Holy Day, a Ghostly Prison, for not to touch me, a Reverse Damage, just because it is a wild card. Um, love it, love it. Now, to, uh, to protect my commander, because I've played this deck a couple times, and it is really silly. I, I didn't read the commander at the very beginning. I do apologize. Uh, when you deal combat damage with a griffin, you get a griffin. You get a griffin token every time a griffin deals damage. And, of course, it doesn't say non-token. So when those token griffins deal damage, you just you double up your griffins every single turn they make contact. It is silly. I've won several games with this deck. Didn't think I would. But I've noticed that Zerium has a target. People love to shoot Zerium because, you know, it's what does the whole thing. So Swiftfoot Boots kind of protects it. Uh, Unquestioned Authority. Protection from Creatures is a, uh, a pretty nice protection. And, I mean, we're playing Mono Wide. We don't really need the, to grant the flying, but uh, Armed Ascension is, is pretty big. Now... That was just to help out one creature. The rest of this is to help out all of our creatures, like Cathar's Crusade. Yeah, Cathar's Crusade gets really, really silly in a deck that doubles the amount of creatures you have every turn. So uh, just from naturally playing Griffins, they're going to get big. But then when you deal combat damage with them and you get one, two, three, six Griffins every turn, it's going to get silly. Uh, Brave the Sands, uh, of course, giving them all Vigilance, which is huge, being able to attack and block. And then, you know, we can block two creatures. Uh, the Obelisk of Erd, 
giving them all plus two. Uh, the Dictate of Heliod, giving them all plus two. And then Acroma's Memorial, pretty much giving them everything else, right? <laughs> just just making them mean old griffins. Um, I do have uh, a lot, a lot of removal here. Um, but before we get into the removal, it's the uh, Save My Team cards, you know. Make a stand, making them indestructible to the end of turn, and then the Rootborn defenses doing the same thing. Uh, I mean, it, normally we would play Rootborn defenses just for that, but the Populate here actually, you know, kind of matters. We'll get another Griffin out of the deal. So, um, so let's look at our, gosh, we have more removal than anything else in the deck. Um, Demystify and Disenchant. Oh, and Disenchant. Uh, mainly because, you know, not enough people run spot removal or uh, uh, enchantment removal. Uh, Sword to Plowshares, Vanishing Light. Oh, I, I like this one. The Coordinated Barrage, because we're going to have a whole bunch of Griffins, right? So just being able to deal Griffin number of damage to a... Uh, uh, Attacking your blocking creature. It's kind of neat. Fell the Mighty. Um, useful for when you don't get all, all of the team pumps, you know, and your creatures are still two power and you can nuke the board. Soul Snare. Crib Swap. Now, Vow of Duty is, I mean, has multiple uses, but. Getting that Annihilator creature, or that Infect creature, not to hit you, always a winner. Uh, Path to Exile, Celestial Purge, Afterlife, Wing Shards, because this lesson continually needs to be taught. I've seen it a bunch. Condemn. I like Condemn. Uh, you know, just put that, tuck it on the bottom. Then we have our board wipes, you know, the austere command, which is the the board wipes with modes. Cleansing Nova, I like that, choose one. Uh, Radvocate War. Now this is a immensely cheap card. Uh, Radvocate at War doesn't, I mean, it, it's, yeah, for a rare, it, because uh, nobody really uses this card. But we just came out of three color new Capenna, and we're uh, a lot of Dominera cards are seeing play now. A lot of those are multicolor, so I I think it's in a better spot than it was. And you know, quite frankly, it, it's not going to touch us at all ever. And then of course a depopulate, uh, just boom, destroy all creatures. That is zero. Um, yeah, I completely slipped by not putting a number. Uh, tell you what, we're going to... I can grab my phone real quick, and we'll just put a number on it. Uh, is it 916? Uh, I don't normally do this, because you all know I'm a consummate professional. No, this is 915. So this is deck number 915. I just re-sleeved Rook Thar because uh, Rook Thar ha had, some, had some pretty bad sleeve issues. So uh, we re-sleeved Rook Thar with the Dragon Shield color of y'all's choice uh, on Twitter. So that turned out to be Peach. So, uh, Drukthar got a new box and new sleeves and new label and all that fun stuff. Uh, so, let's put the number on here. I do apologize. There we go. 915. Zero of the Golden Wind. But 
tonight is commander night here at the CCG, so I'm going to go ahead and do my best to shuffle these. Um, because this one may get played tonight. I just might. Uh, the CCG, of course, uh, I'm referring to my game shop, uh, Canvas Collectible Games. So Thursday nights are Commander nights. Although, let's be real, every night is Commander night, right? I, I mean, because most folks have a Commander deck, and I... I keep, uh, you know, a couple dozen here, plus the ones that I am building. So, that is where we are at. Um, don't have a wall to go put this on. But, I do appreciate y'all watching, and uh, y'all let me know what you think. But, right now, it is time to shuffle and cut.